Welcome to Freshwaters Productions, a show all about getting you out of that AAA quagmire. Today we've got Toy Soldiers, a tower defense game from the early 2000s that is both classic and indie. This game takes place in World War I, or rather, in a toy box recreation of World War I, in which various wind-up toys must attack each other while defense turrets guard their toy boxes. This game has a deceptively large amount of content in it. You initially play as the British for one entire campaign. This campaign is certainly the easier of the two non-DLC campaigns, and allows you to go through a relatively straightforward game without too much in the way of nasty surprises. It can get very easy to become complacent in this game, just setting up big guns and anti-air guns and expecting every problem to solve itself. The German campaign, however, will break you out of that hard. The second run through the game expects you to take everything you learned from your initial run of the campaign and use it all at the same time. If you want to place a turret, you will almost always have to take it from your enemy. Your defenses aren't quite ready yet. The British aren't waiting. Their tanks are charging in. Get into your tank and get that cannon ready. The game refuses to let you rest on your laurels for even a moment, and you will find yourself getting greatly stressed in later levels if you're not ready. Or rather, if you can't think. You have six different turrets to choose from, starting with anti-infantry guns, i.e. machine guns that work their way up to small explosive cannons, heavy artillery cannons, which are my personal favorites, just getting bigger and bigger, chemical weapons that start with gas throwers and upgrade to flaming gas bomb mortars, anti-air guns that utterly wreck any airborne foe, and the mortar gun that gets bigger and badder as you upgrade it along. A major part of this game is the ability to directly control the defense towers you create, and more than often you will have to do so if, say, you want your anti-infantry gun to stop shooting at that tank and go after the cavalry units running past it. Or, if you want your big artillery gun to shoot at the boss enemy and not the infantry it spits out. I'd complain about this targeting system, but it was likely meant to be kept simple to encourage direct intervention. What starts out as a relatively relaxing strategy game transforms into a heated struggle in later levels as you attempt to gain ground to put your emplacements onto. My advice? Learn how to use the aerial bombers and master them as soon as possible. The tanks in this game are only slightly faster than real life counterparts, so make time for that. But that's not all. Two pieces of very good DLC came out for this game as well. First off was the Kaiser's Battle, in which the Germans set themselves against the French turrets and guns. You fire your Hotchkiss, or whatever kind of gun you have, against the most powerful enemies that Germany has to offer. Including a very, very insane boss fight with a giant super tank. And then came Invasion, in which the British finally land on German soil, and they've got some unpleasant surprises for you. Every single sort of toy you could think of from the classic wind-up toy era. From fire trucks to laser tanks to spacemen to UFOs to Japanese zero planes to knights in shining armor riding steeds. Most noble. Invasion has it. Along with one amazing final boss fight. So if you ever get a shot at it, if you want to play one of those old school tower defense games, Give toy soldiers a try.